Father's love, everyone, and welcome. This week we're going to start a series entitled Overwhelmed. The first message is called The True You. So as always, kick back, relax, and let's see what the Spirit can teach us this week. Uh, we're starting this series, as was announced earlier, uh, called uh, Overwhelmed. I want to give a little of the backstory to this series. Some time ago, at the end of a message, we uh, asked folks in the congregation what they were struggling with, what's holding them back, what's the major obstacle to their spiritual growth, where, where, where are they stuck, and what's keeping them stuck. And we asked them to fill that out and put it in these baskets on the way out. Well, we took those responses and went through them, and they, they kind of fell into six general categories. And I, I, I want to share those with you. Um, and at one point I said to Trevor, who's our graphic design person, yeah, gosh, it kind of feels like, it's almost like family feud when I'm listing off these, these things. And so he made a graph on family feud. It's kind of bizarre because on the one hand, this is kind of heavy stuff. Uh, and it's kind of, it feels like it's making light of it. On the other hand, we're all human, right? And so, you know, we can just put this up there. And, and as you're going to find out here in a little bit anyways, this isn't the real you. And so, so we can have fun with it. So here's our family feud, which is a bizarre show. If you watch some of those families, where do they find these people? Like, ah, we're going to wait. It's like spastic. So I love the way the guy says bored. Says number six. The number six thing that's holding us back is addiction. All right. About one out of ten of us who attend Wilden Hills Church uh, struggle with this. The number five thing that holds people at Woodland Hills Church back is unforgiveness, resentment. They're stuck being unable to forgive someone who's wronged them, or maybe forgive themselves. The number four thing that holds people back, that makes them feel stuck, is, board says, depression. Feeling hopeless. About 15% of us struggle with that. The number three mountain that people face that it feels too big for them to get over is... Feeling shame. You're not good enough. You're feeling like you're almost one out of three people who attend uh, have some sense of inferiority or shame or something like that. The number three thing that keeps people from growing in Christ is fear. Control, which is usually a manifestation of fear. It's got to control people and control things. Pervasive anxiety. That may be more true right now than in times past. But over one third of us uh, struggle with that, which... By the way, just seeing this, I hope, whatever your struggle is, you feel like you get the impression that you're not alone in this, all right? This is, this is common human stuff. But the number one thing at Woodland Hills that keeps people from growing, that keeps them stuck, that prevents them from going forward, the number one obstacle is... Yeah, you got there, there you go. A... I, can't. I talk a little too fast when I get excited, and my... I go down rabbit trails when my ADD meds wear off, but give me a break. Cut me some slack. Come on. <laughs> okay, actually, there's only five categories that we looked at. That last one was just thrown in there for fun. <laughs> These are the big ones. So we thought, okay, since this is where people are at, let's carve out a series that addresses these five issues. And, and if your particular issue didn't make the top five, don't feel, you know, bad. Um, whatever struggle you're going through, and, and most of us have some struggles, uh, we'll be giving principles in the series that will apply to whatever we're going through. So, so hang in there. Don't stay out of church just because you didn't make the top five. Um, and so uh, over the next five weeks, we'll be addressing these. Now, I, I want to tell you up front that, that we're going to have three guest speakers during this series, uh, and they all happen to be female. Uh, in the case of two of them, uh, it's because God put a message on their heart before we were even thinking about this series. God put a message on their heart that has to do with one of these issues. And we just thought this feels providential to include them in the series. In the case of the other lady, Sue Krautkramer, we're having her here just because she's an outstanding speaker and is a specialist in the area that she's dealing with. So, folks, I think this is going to be a series that's going to bless your socks off. Uh, and I am just uh, anticipating people getting set free. Amen? Getting set totally free. Freedom is what it's about. Since I'm the lead-off batter in this thing, what I'm going to do today is, is, is a, a kind of set up the framework for the whole series. I, I'm going to talk about a, what's at the root of all of the things that we feel like we can't get over. What's at the very base of all of them. This is a message that 
uh, is, is really foundational to the way we think about things here at Woodland Hills Church. And so it, it's, it's one of the dozen or so messages that we cycle back on quite intentionally uh, every couple of years. Um, so if you've been here for two or more years, you've probably heard some of this before. It will be review. But believe me, there, there's nothing that you, could, you couldn't review this too much. This is just foundational stuff. All the more important because it's so rarely taught out there uh, and even more rarely practiced. So this is just absolutely crucial foundational stuff. Uh, I'll start with this. Let me ask you this question. Whatever the issue is, whatever would be your top number one obstacle, whatever is holding you back, I want to ask you the question, can you imagine yourself being set free from that? Can you imagine yourself being totally set free from that? Uh, maybe you're one of the ones that struggle with addiction. Uh, it could be drugs or alcohol, pain meds, sex. Maybe you're addicted to food or television. It could be anything. You're in bondage to it. Can you imagine yourself being completely free from that? I want you to try to do that right now. Vividly try to see yourself as a person who's totally free. And I, I want you to enter into that. Try to like, experience that from the inside. Imagine how good it will feel when you're freed from that. Imagine how, imagine all the things you'll be able to do that you can't do now because that addiction keeps you from doing that. Imagine how it's going to positively impact your relationship with God and, and family and friends. Um, imagine all the money you're going to save because addictions tend to be kind of expensive. And all the things you could do with that extra money. Enter into that. Can you imagine yourself there? Or, or maybe you're one of the ones that has trouble forgiving somebody. Maybe you've been doing that for so long, it doesn't even feel like a choice anymore. It's just sort of who you are. It's made you sort of just a, a resentful person. Or maybe the one you have trouble forgiving is yourself. The last five years, ever since that car wreck that left the kid in a wheelchair, and it's because you had taken a couple too many beers before you went out and drove. And now you can't forgive yourself of that. Okay. Can you imagine yourself being totally free of that load? Can you imagine yourself freely forgiving the one who has wronged you? I want you to try to picture this and enter into it. Can you imagine yourself forgiving yourself? Really believing that Jesus paid the entire debt, as we sang about earlier. Uh, can you imagine how good it will feel to not be walking around with that burden, without any ill will towards anybody, including yourself? Or maybe you're one of the ones who, your big struggle is that you, you just don't think you ever measure up. As long as you can remember, you've had this kind of shame or this less than sort of attitude. Um, feeling inferior or incompetent. Can you imagine yourself freed from that disease? Can you, get a picture of yourself. What would you look like if all of those voices in your head that tell you that you're ugly or stupid or incompetent or a failure or unlikable, if all those voices were gone, imagine how that would feel, the freedom that you'd feel there. Can you see yourself as the kind of person that can walk into a crowded room and not feel inferior to anybody? In fact, can you see yourself as the kind of person that walks into a crowded room and it never even occurs to you to measure yourself against anyone else? In fact, you walk into a crowded room and it, you don't care what anyone thinks about you. Can you see yourself as that sort of person? Why don't you try to imagine that? Or maybe you're one of the ones who struggle with anxiety or fear. You, you live in that world of worst case scenario and it just kind of paralyzes you and... and, and Maybe you're one of the ones that, that manifest that, that fear by nervously trying to control other people and, and, and your environment. Can you imagine yourself being set free from that? Totally set free from that. Uh, can you imagine yourself um, having a peace that passes all understanding? Can you see yourself? Try to do this. See yourself as a person who's got the center of calmness. And it's there. It, it's that peace that we sang about earlier that's indescribable. That peace that passes understanding. And even when your environment is, is just falling apart, and maybe even people around you are freaking out, you've got a center of peace. Can you see yourself as that person? Or maybe you're one of the ones who do hopeless and have depression. Um, can, can you imagine yourself being freed from that? I want you to try to imagine yourself as vividly as possible as, as a person who is full of hope and full of joy. Can you imagine what it would be like to wake up in the morning and look forward to the day? Can you imagine what it would be like to, to 
have the default on your face to be a smile rather than that forlorn look that you tend to default to. Can you imagine what it would be like not to have to work at smiling? Get a picture of that. Now, I expect that for some of us, maybe a lot of us, that was rather hard to do. Maybe as you try to do that, there's pushback in your brain, like, come on, this is make-believe or something like that. Maybe it's something you found it absolutely impossible to do. This morning, I want us to see that we can imagine this. And in fact, it's very, very important that we imagine this. Uh, The truth is, folks, that we have power over our brain. It's just that we so rarely use it that some of us forget that we have it. We've got power over our brain. Um, Most people listen to what their brain says and they trust it. (laughs) Big mistake. You actually believe that what your brain says is real. And so whatever tells you is true, well, that's what you believe. So then when you try to imagine something different, it's difficult because now you're telling your brain something different than what it's always been telling you. And it feels weird to tell it anything, let alone to tell it something that contradicts what it's been telling you. That's the conundrum there. But see, the truth is by God's design, we have authority over our brain and we're supposed to use it. We have a responsibility to use it. I'll prove it to you. Right now, everybody, imagine a green banana. Got it? Now... I want you to turn that green banana to a yellow banana. Did you do it? Okay, now turn that yellow banana into a pink banana with purple polka dots. <laughs> oh, look at that. You did it. And now, no, this may be tough, but I want you to turn that pink purple polka dotted banana into a pink polka dotted butterfly and to let it fly away. Just let it go. And watch it just fade off into this. And then there's an eagle that comes down and eats it. <laughs> no. <laughs> I saw that in funny some videos one time. Oh, it's free, it's free. Okay. <laughs> Look what you're gonna do with your brain. You have authority over your brain. It will do whatever it's supposed to do because that's how we're wired. God created us, uh, body, soul, and spirit. You're more than your brain. Uh, your brain is part of your soul, suke in Greek. It has to do with the way we experience ourselves. Okay, that's the, the way the, the narrative we, we, we live in, all right? And, and, but we're more than that. Most people don't realize it. They, they think they are just their brain, whatever they experience themselves being. They think that that's what they are because they believe their brain. They think they identify that as real. But you're more than that. Your body, soul, and spirit. And spirit's the most fundamental aspect of you. That's the seat of your will. And in God's design, we as spirit agents are supposed to have authority over our brain. It's, it's given to us is our tool. It's our organic computer by which we interface with the outside world. And, and we are entrusted under the lordship of Jesus Christ to program that thing. That's why, so we're not supposed to be following our brain. Our brain's supposed to be following us. And we're not supposed to be listening to what our brain tells us is true. We're supposed to be telling our brain what is true. We've got it all, one of the effects of the fall is that all that got reversed. But in Christ, we're to get the right order back in place. See, this is why the Bible tells us a number of times what we're supposed to think, which would make zero sense if we didn't have power over what we think. So, for example, here's what Paul says, Philippians 4, 8. Listen to this. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. It's your responsibility to think about what is true and noble and right and and lovely and pure. Which means that when you find stuff in your brain, which means that you're you're aware of what's going on in your brain because most people aren't. But when you find stuff in your brain that's not lovely, true or noble or right or lovely or pure, you set it aside to turn your brain to what is true and, and, and right and noble and lovely and pure. We have authority over our brain, and that's no more difficult than turning a green banana into a yellow banana. If you realize that you've got the authority to do that, and if you're aware of what your brain is thinking, we're not supposed to follow the brain, we're supposed to lead the brain. And, and we'll see that that's a very important thing. Here, 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 here's why. Most of what is in everyone's brain is what they've inherited from this world, this fallen world. Uh, in the process of growing up, we just sort of, our brain just absor- absorbs things. And you know, the brain never shuts up. It doesn't shut up for, for a second. Try to make it shut up for a second. Go lock yourself in a, in a bathroom and see how long you can go in total silence without any chatter going on in your brain. In, in three seconds, you'll hear something like, how am I doing? Oh, this isn't too hard. Uh, you know, it, 
It, it's just a chatter machine. Even when you're sleeping, it chatters. So it just regurgitates stuff all the time. And most of what it regurgitates, in fact, all of what it regurgitates is what's come into it. Okay, I, I, all the stuff is absorbed. Everything that's ever been said to you, everything that's ever been done to you, every experience you've gone through, good or bad, uh, a, 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 every, every TV show you've ever watched, every false conclusion you've ever come to, every movie, every, all the social media that bombards us continually, all that goes into the brain. The brain just chews on it and chews on it and chews on it. And while I'm sure some of what you received in the process of growing up was true and right and noble and lovely and pure, a lot of it's not. A lot of it's pure garbage. Pure garbage. But the brain just churns on that. It just renews itself over and over again. And all that pollution, all that false stuff, it inherits from the world. And the way you see yourself, it's just a result of all of that. Okay, it's all mixed up with, with all of that. It goes on and on and on and on and on and on and on. And if you believe that that is what is real, if you just default to the position that whatever your brain thinks is, is true, well then, you of course are going to identify yourself as that garbage self that the brain says that you are. Which is just a conglomeration of all the things you've inherited from the world. If you believe that, then you are just really a footnote to the, to, to the world. Whatever the world says you are, well, that's who you are. Because you're giving the brain that kind of authority. And that's why it's so hard to then imagine being something different than that. Because you've always identified that as real. And now you're telling your brain something that's different from what you identified as real. So it's going to feel unreal. And it's going to really be hard to imagine that and think that that could possibly be real of you. But the truth is, folks, we have authority over our mind, authority over our soul. And it's our responsibility to use it. And in fact, folks, though we hardly ever talk about this. We talk about behaviors, but the most important behavior is what goes on between your ears 24-7. And, and everything depends on us taking authority over that and speaking truth into that. Here's the thing. Whatever you identify as real is what you're having faith in. If you're giving your brain the authority to tell you what's real, well, you're having faith in that. That's the, that's the you that you're having faith in. And by God's own design, whatever you're having faith in, you will tend to become According to your faith, be it unto you. You find this communicated in a number of different ways in the New Testament. Uh, it, 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 the, the driver of our life is faith. Now, a lot of folks don't understand what faith is. Um, they think that faith is a religious thing or something. Uh, it, it's not a religious thing. It's a life thing. Everybody has faith. Now, to see that, I want to turn to a passage that I turn to quite often because it's so foundational and so rarely understood or appreciated uh, for, as to how insightful and important it is. It's Hebrews 11.1. 1. And for us to get this um, and to see the importance of it, we're going to learn a little Greek this morning. You ready to learn a little Greek this morning? Get your thinking caps on, all right? Uh, it's worth it. Here's what it says. Now, faith, this is Darby's translation, which is the best translation of this passage. Some of the tr translations are just screwy. Now, faith is the substantiating of things hoped for the conviction of things not seen. Okay, there's three important words in this passage. The first is hypostasis. Everyone say hypostasis. Hypostasis. Hypostasis refers to the substance of something or even the essence of something. The substance of this, this, this stand here is metal, all right? Uh, it, 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 it's, it's, it's what makes it a solid thing, the solidity of something. And when it's used in a verbal context, it means making something solid. And in the context of faith, it has to do with seeing something or envisioning something as a solid reality. Vivid, real-like vision of something. And what you're envisioning is, and this brings me to the second word we're going to look at, elpizo. Everyone say elpizo. 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 Elpizo is what you hope for or what you anticipate or just what you expect. It's what you think is around the corner. It could be positive. It could be negative. But you're having faith when you are seeing what you anticipate concretely, vividly, in a lifelike way. Like, for example, right now, I am, and I've been only saying this for three or four years, I'm just putting the finishing touches on this book I've been working on, okay, for nine years. And I'm going through the final edits. This is the final, final, final version. And I've got a deadline i got to make. Now, I'm having faith that I will make that deadline when I envision myself completing this thing on time, and I, I, I see the finished product of it, and I, and I see that vividly. Uh, I'm having faith that that will happen. Because here's what happens. That faith creates in me something, and this brings us to the third word here, um, uh, a leg cost. Everyone say a leg cost. It creates in me a feeling that it is so. A leg cost refers to a conviction. Uh, that, a conviction or assurance that something is the case, a feeling of confidence. As I envision myself 
finishing this thing. And I env- imagine how good that's going to feel. And I see the finished product. And I, I'm just so happy that this is over. And I'm anticipating what it's going to do. Uh, I, I, there's a satisfaction with comes with that. In fact, I'm really, when I'm having faith about getting this thing done, I'm enjoying the satisfaction of having it done ahead of time. And here's the important point to note. It's that very enjoyment that motivates me to do it on time. Uh, when, when I enter into satisfaction, getting a clear vision of this being done, imagining kind of how it's maybe it was going to set people free, it jazzes me. There's a yes in my spirit. Uh, it, it, it gets me kind of manic. I mean, this morning I was up at quarter to four, like I had most mornings, and I, I wake up and I got to get to it. You know, it's just, I, I get by three or four hours sleep because I'm just excited about this. Well, that's a leg cost. And the leg cost is created because I'm doing a hypostasis on the, the, the El Pizzo. All right? <laughs> So you could summarize, you could, yeah, I could summarize Hebrews 11 1 this way. Um, faith is a reality like vision, hypostasis, of what you hope for or anticipate, el pizzo, that creates the feeling that it, that it is so, a leg cost, even though it isn't yet. Okay. If you want to impress your friends, you could do the short version, which is simply faith is the hypostasis of an el pizzo that creates an a leg cost that leads to the, uh, the el pizzo. But you might want to go with the English version instead. So it's, it's reality like vision. <clears throat> you enter into the satisfaction ahead of time. Do you know that neuroscience has proven this? Uh, to the degree that you imagine something vividly, your brain can't tell the difference between the thing you imagine and the real thing. Because the same network of neurons are being activated. And because it can't tell the difference between those two things, the same thing you'll feel when you encounter the real thing, you feel when you imagine it. To the degree that how, the way you're imagining it, is, is approximates the real thing. And this is, neuroscience is just proving Hebrews 11.1, because this is how faith works. Uh, and it's not a religious thing, it's, it's, a, it, it's a life thing. So th- there's a lot of variables that affect whether you're going to attain the El Pizzo that you hope for, uh, the, the goal that you're going after. But it's a life principle. By God's own design, it's a life principle that all other things being equal, what you do or don't do, and what you become or don't become is, is mostly the result of the future that you're previewing in your head day in and day out, whether you know it or not. It, 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 it's what you are making a substantial reality. That vision is the direction of your life. Or to say it biblically, what you do or don't do, what you become or won't become is, is a function of your faith. What are you believing? What are you believing? What are you seeing as a substantial reality? What are you allowing to create that energy in, in, in you to drive towards? According to your faith, be it unto you. Now, I can just hear someone thinking right now. Or maybe it's a pod I can't tell. I'm not getting a clear frequency. But somebody's thinking, knock off the psychobabble. Even though you just quoted Jesus, knock off the psychobabble. Because look at, I can envision myself as a famous rock star singer. But the fact that I sing like a toad in mating season probably means that's not going to happen. That's what you were thinking, wasn't it? And actually, if, if you do sing like a toad in mating season, uh, you might have a promising career in a grunge metal band. You might just want to check out that genre. You're, 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 you're born for it. <laughs> okay, but they're making a good point. Here's the thing. You, you, if... You're, if you're going to attain that El Pizzo that you're shooting for, the goal there that you hope for, uh, your faith has to be based on reality. And it has to be based on what is true. To have a faith, you know, to be envisioning something and, and creating an energy for something that is, is outside the realm of possibility and just is not true, that's called delusional thinking. And so dream on, it's not going to happen. Trevor, I'm sorry, but that, that aspiration of yours to become a famous ballerina, it's just not going to happen. To, uh, <laughs> dude, it's just not going to... Hey, I had to get... He was mean to me first. Cry. He me. He. We go back a long ways. Insulting is our love language, so, so it's cool. They sign each other. We'll take it outside after this in a pacifist kind of way. So, okay, it's got to be based on truth and reality. So that leads to this very, 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 very important question, folks. What are you or who are you going to trust to define truth and reality for you? Who gets to define that for you? Here's your choices. Behind door number one. It's a door that almost everybody chooses, though they don't even know they're choosing it. We're born slaves in this world. But that door is simply say, trust your brain. Trust your brain. You know, whatever's going on in your brain, that's what's real. Now, see, if you choose that, just know that. Know this. 
You have just given authority to all, everything that's ever been said to you and everything that's ever been done to you and everything you've ever experienced and every failure you've ever gone through and the kid who teased you on the, on the bus and, and, and every television show you've ever watched and every movie you've ever watched and all the social media lies that poured into you. You just gave all of them authority to define who you are, to define the direction of your life and what you're going to do and not do and what you're going to become and not become. Which means, basically, when we choose door number one, we reduce ourselves to be a footnote to everybody else. We're just an extension of them. We're just an extension of what they wanted for us and what they thought about us and all of that. And most of that is garbage. But if you believe that that's true, then you're trapped because you'll have a garbage self in your brain and you're going to be experiencing your garbage self the rest of your life according to your faith be it unto you. Here's an alternative. Uh, just a suggestion. Behind door number two, you might find a source that's got more credibility than your own brain and therefore more credibility than all the stupid voices that spoke into your brain and did stuff to you that got lodged in your brain. You might find a source that's got more credibility than that. And folks, that is what we're given in the New Testament. Uh, we are told what our Creator thinks about us. Because of what Jesus did for us, He tells us what He thinks about us. And um, you know, when Paul says, think only on what is true and noble and right and lovely and pure, this is what he's thinking about. Turn your brain to the truth of, of what God says about you in Jesus Christ. This is the choice. And for, for, this choice is foundational to everything. This choice is at the foundation of all discipleship. It's at the foundation of all transformation. It's at the foundation of, of, of all victory, of all freedom. Uh, who are you going to believe to tell you the truth and, and, and to tell you what is real? And, and to embark on the kingdom freedom is to make this decision. I choose to believe, and not just believe theoretically, but I choose to envision. I choose to have a hypostasis of everything God says about me. I choose to believe that that is true. And if my garbage brain doesn't agree with that, if a garbage brain says that that's unreal, I tell my garbage brain to shut up because let like, God be true and every brain a liar if it disagrees with what God says. Here's where we are in Christ. And, 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 and so you take that, and you, it doesn't matter how weird it feels at first or how odd it feels, or if it contradicts your own experience, uh, if it contradicts what, everything you've ever heard, you choose to give God more credibility than everything else. Because he's your creator, and I kind of think he probably knows what he's talking about. And see, as you envision the truth about you uh, as a hypostasis, as a concrete reality, it creates, if you make that your apizo, to, to, to live into that, that creates this feeling, this leg cost, that it is so. And you begin to actually live this out. You begin to feel like this. You begin to think like this. And now, finally, your experience is starting to line up with the truth. You're no longer conformed to the pattern of this world. Now you're starting to manifest the truth of who you are in Christ. This is what Paul's getting at in Romans 12. This is a powerful passage. That's why I come back to it quite a bit. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, because then, but only then, then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Okay, folks, don't be conformed any longer to the pattern of this world. The pattern of the, this world is the garbage. It's all the stuff that you've ever inherited that disagrees with Christ. Everything that's been said to you that disagrees with the truth of who you are in Christ. Everything, every conclusion you've come to on your own that disagrees with Christ. All the stuff that your brain regurgitates endlessly, that's the pattern of this world. And the default setting for the vast, 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 vast majority of people in this fallen, enslaved planet, the default setting is to believe the pattern of the world. Oh, that's just who I am. I can't help it. That's who I am. But Paul says, don't be conformed to that any longer. No, be transformed. How? By the renewing of your mind. Now, to renew it means you go over and over and over. You make it new again and again. Re just means again. So it's again, it's new. Again, it's new. Again, it's new. Again, it's new. You, 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 your brain's always talking. The question is, what is it talking with and what is it talking about? And, and either you're programming it in accordance with the truth that's in Christ or you're defaulting letting the world program it. And it, to the degree that you do the second one, that's garbage. But to the degree that you do the first one, you are being set free. And this is the you that is true and right and noble and lovely and pure. And you're to think only on those things. And so Paul says, make that your faith uh, and go over that and over that and over that. Because as you do that, then he says, now you'll be able to test and approve God's will. It has that, that, the phrase has the connotation of uh, you'll be able to experience for yourself what God's will is. And it's always good. It's always pleasing. It's always lovely. Uh, this is the you that is true, right, noble, lovely, and pure. The you that is in Christ Jesus by God's grace. 
And, and, and so as you envision that true you, it creates that leg cost we've been talking about. That, that feeling of yesness, that confirmation. And see, that's what pulls you forward. That, that's the gasoline that the kingdom engine runs on. This is, the, 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 this is the ticket towards freedom. It pulls you forward. That. It gives you the motivation to do some of the tough stuff you might need to do to break out of the chains that you're in. But you see how wonderful it is to be in Christ and the freedom that there is in Christ. And your soul says, I want that. I need that. I'm better than where I am in right now. And now finally you'll find out for yourself the truth of who you are in Christ. Your experience starts to line up with reality, reality as God defines it. So here's just a, a small snippet, just a small, small snippet of, of, uh, of, of the truth of who we are in Christ, okay? Just internalize this. I, 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 according to God, if you accept this in Christ, if you surrender to Christ and surrender to the truth of who you are in Christ, you've got to know that you are forgiven and freed from all condemnation. The, the true you doesn't suffer under condemnation and shame and all that. No, the true you, you know you're forgiven and you forgive others and you're freed from all condemnation. And, and the true you is holy and you're holy and blameless child of God. That's who you really are. Now, right now, some garbage voice in your head is saying, give me a break. What about last Friday night? You know what? what, 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 what. Who are you going to believe? Here's your choice. Who are you going to believe? You can believe your own experience and just keep on replaying that the rest of your life. Good luck. Or you can do something different. You can be transformed by the renewing of your mind and set it in a different direction and get a different elpizo and different hypostasis that creates a different leg cost. You are holy and blameless. Can you see yourself? What do you look like when you're really living out holy and blameless? Oh, and then you're filled with God's spirit and, 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 and you're a temple of God. You're, you're a walking, talking, power-packed being because you've got God's spirit inside of you. You're a temple of God. You're precious, praise God. And what do you look like when you're more than a conqueror? Oh, then you can do all things in Christ. No more of this weasel self that's just, you know, I can't do anything. I never it all. That's garbage voices. That's your dad speaking, but not Abba dad. It's your earthly dad. And maybe it's time to tell him to shut up and, and, and start listening to what God says about you. In Christ, you're more than a conqueror and can do all things in Christ. Hallelujah. That's what's true about you. Have faith in that. Quit having faith in your earthly dad or mother or whoever it was that lied to you. Uh, no, have faith in what your heavenly father says about you. And when you believe that, you find that you are set free from the law of sin and death. In the pattern of this world, there's a law. You're going to sin and it leads to death. That's, that's just the law. That's just default. That's inevitable. It happens all the time. And until you wake up to that, you're a slave to that. But we have the power to wake up and, and to focus our minds on what is true and right and noble and lovely and pure. And you know what? It's no more difficult than changing a green banana into a yellow banana. You have authority over your brain. So, so you, your spirit submitted to him, and now it's time for you, spirit being, to get your brain to submit to you. Take every thought captive to Jesus Christ, Paul says. 2 Corinthians 10. Man, and, and so when you find that thought that's renegade and not agreeing with that, well, then it's time to bring it in. Another passage that comes to mind is in Ephesians 1, that you are seated with Christ in heavenly places far above all principalities and powers. Can you believe that that, that is true about you? Far above all of the demonic realm, all of the sin that, that plagues us. See, the, the fact is this. We have the power to tell our brain what to think and tell it what to imagine, which means we have the power to tell our brain what we're having faith in. That's up to us, and that's our responsibility. And, 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 and this is what we're supposed to be having faith in. To have faith in God is to have faith in what God says about you, and this is what God says about you. No ifs, ands, or buts, take backs, or exceptions, all right? And, and, and so our job is to envision that and experience that, that leg cost that drives us towards that. And when your brain says, what are you talking about? This is a make-believe. This is stupid. This will never pan out. Look at all the times you failed in the past. You just turn around and say, hey, brain, uh, listen, too bad, so sad. You're not in charge anymore, okay? I'm in charge of you, and I'm submitted to Christ, so you're going to be submitted to Christ. And then take authority over that and start speaking into it and turn the, the green bananas yellow and turn that old false self into you into a true self and start seeing it as a substantial reality. See, we've been living in a narrative. It's a bondage narrative, a lie narrative, a deception narrative. It's a pattern of this world narrative. And that's the narrative that has brought us to the point where we say, oh, I'm an addict and I can't help myself. I, I, I'm just a hopeless person. I've never had hope and I can't forgive people. I just, oh, I'm bitter. I don't know. I, I got even. Or I can't forgive myself. I did something that's absolutely unforgivable. Now, I know Jesus paid the debt, but I still got to pay it myself somehow. Uh, that, that old narrative... Is what leads us to the point where we're living in anxiety all the time, or we're thinking that we're less than, and we'll never measure up, and we're worried about what people think about us. That's old narrative stuff. It, 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 it was in principle killed. It was crucified 2,000 years ago. And now there's, there's, the creator has a, a truth for us uh, that can set us free. The creator shows up, and he's got quite a different opinion than all the voices in your head. Because the creator says, you, know, you, you, you don't think you can get set free? 
what are you talking about, dude? Or dudette, as the case may be. What are you talking about? I set you free 2,000 years ago. And whom the sun sets free is free indeed. You just got to get that stupid garbage brain of yours to line up with it, you know? You just got to catch up to me here, all right? I'm way ahead of you on this one. Uh, you know, and, and it starts with faith. You're in Christ. You, you, if you're in Christ, you're far above. You're far above addiction. You're seated with Christ. You're far above hopelessness. You're far above fear, anxiety, and worrying, and pettiness, and unforgiveness, and shame, and less than. You're far above that. Man, you are filled with the Spirit of God. Oh, I'm feeling some fire up here. You're filled with the Spirit of God. You've got the fullness of God's joy in you and peace in you. Don't tell me that you're hopeless. You're full of hope. Don't tell me that you're despairing. You're full of joy. Don't tell me you're in bondage. You're full of freedom. Don't tell me you can't love. You're full of love. Don't tell me you can't have peace. You're full of peace. God's peace. You've got it all up front. That's the real you. That's the real you. Have faith in that. Lock it in. Have faith in that. See that as a hypostasis. Make that your elpizo. And then feel that leg cost that drives you to that. Because this is what's true, folks. This is what's true. This is what's true. Sometimes people, when they hear me talk like this, they say, well, it sounds like you're telling us to brainwash ourselves. And that's exactly what I'm telling you. <laughs> Someone's going to brainwash you, and it's supposed to be you. Yeah. What we've been doing is washing our brain with a bunch of garbage. You know what happens when you wash things with garbage? It doesn't get very clean, does it? Yeah, we just regurgitate the same old garbage washing our brain. It's time to start washing it with the water of the word. Hallelujah. <laughs> and get clean of that crap. Get freed from that crap. Get delivered from that crap. That's what Jesus means when he says, you shall know the truth, and the truth will set you free. It will set you free. The truth, it's know it, have faith in it, and see it, and imagine it. And that creates the energy to start moving towards it. This is what we are. The question is, just, will we experience this or not? And we start to experience it. Your first step to freedom is to choose who you're going to believe and start exercising faith in this. So I've got a minute left here. I'm going to try this. Right now, I want everybody, you two pod listeners, unless you're driving, uh, imagine, imagine, get a vivid image of, of you as you are now, okay? Imagine the situation where that which you is your biggest obstacle most forcefully confronts you, where you most, if, imagine a situation, maybe it could be the last time that, you, that this happened to you, where it activates your fear button or your hopeless button or your, your addiction button. The last time you said yes to something you should say no to or no to something you should say yes to. Uh, imagine a situation where you lost your temper, you raged, you gave in. Whatever the issue is that you're, you're struggling with, where you felt most inferior and shamed. Get it in your mind. That is your pattern of the world self, the garbage self. That's the self you inherited. Now you have a very important decision to make. Are you going to keep on believing that? Or now try this. It's no different than turning the green banana into a yellow banana. See yourself as you are in Christ in that same situation. The same situation. It's always triggered you. Can you see yourself as you are in Christ? Full of God's spirit, full of his joy, full of his peace. Look at how you respond differently. You don't lose your temper. No, you're perfectly calm. You don't freak out. You've got a center of peace. You don't give any addiction. You can do all things for Christ who strengthens you. It means nothing to you. You don't worry about what they think. No, you've got your, 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 your value and your identity in Christ. Can you see it? Imagine that. That there, make that a hypostasis. Make it concrete. Make it vivid. Real-like. And then try to enter into the joy of how, just how good that feels. Maybe it's a trillion miles from where you think you are right now, but it's not that far away. That trillion mile business is part of the pattern of the world lie. It's right around the corner, okay? And imagine how good it's going to feel. And start to feel it already. The, the engine that the, that the whole Christian life runs on is, is the, the sense of satisfaction ahead of time of how good it's going to be when we finally get there. Because the truth is we're already there. We're just trying to catch up to what God says about us. Uh, enter into that, and that will pull you forward. People who try to give people a change by shaming them are doing the exact wrong thing. They got enough of that all going on already. It, it's when you realize that you are bigger, you're better than this. Stupid stuff we're involved in. We, we sell ourselves so short because of all the voices in our head. But you're better than the sin. You're better than the bondage. You're better than the addictions. You're better than the unforgiveness. You're better than the hopelessness. You're, way, you're bigger than that. 
Like we sang earlier, he is stronger, right? He's stronger, can break every chain. But see, we are in him. <laughs> we, so instead of inheriting the garbage of the world, we inherit all that is his. That's what it is to be in Christ. You inherit his righteousness and his victory. You inherit all that. Get a new inheritance for crying out loud, all right? And the way we get that is through changing our faith. Whatever you have faith in, that's what you're going to inherit. That's the way of saying it. Whatever you have faith in, that's what you're going to inherit. Inherit the kingdom. I'll give you one last assignment. <clears throat> Your brain's always talking. The question is, what is it talking with and what's it talking about? If you default to the world, it's just the same old garbage, garbage, garbage. We need to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. This is something that we've got to go over and over and over again. So I want to give you this assignment. In the morning, when you first finally get conscious, whatever that means for you, Spend five minutes just going over uh, who you are in Christ. And do it in the worst case scenarios, in the worst situations where you're at your worst. And see yourself as you truly are. And maybe at night. uh, No, not maybe. I'm giving you an assignment. Do it at night too. Uh, Go over and over who you really are in Christ. And see, most people don't even realize they have faith. They don't know the pictures that they're running. They don't know the the hypostasis because they're so used to it. We just do it, you know, by nature. But as kingdom people, if we're going to be transformed in a different direction, we've got to become aware of our think. We've got to step outside of our think. So be diligent on, on paying attention to what you think throughout the day. And when you notice that there are things that are not true, not noble, not right, not lovely or pure, pure set those aside and turn to things that are true, lovely, noble, uh, uh, right and pure. And, 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 and that's the true you. That's the you that's based on the Word of God. And so just turn it to that. And it, you, in time, it becomes a habit. And you'll find that as you envision these things concretely, it starts to pull you in that direction. And now finally, in time, more and more, increasingly, you're able to approve for yourself, test for yourself, experience for yourself the freedom that the true you has in Christ Jesus. And it's freaking beautiful. Amen. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Would you stand? Ah. Uh, that was fun. That was fun. That was freedom. That, 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 I, I, that, uh, that was fun. Okay, hey, listen, if you're here this morning and have some need that could use prayer, uh, we have prayer teams up here by the stairs. Come up here and get prayer for whatever it is. Could be a topic we talked about. Could be something totally unrelated. Or if you're here this morning and you're not a surrendered follower of Jesus, but something in you is saying, eh, you should check this out. Come up here and talk to these folks. They'd love to explain to you uh, how, how to get started on, on walking with Christ and entering into this kingdom and moving in a new direction. Praise God. Whom the Son has free, set free is free indeed. Amen. If you agree with that, say amen and get out of here. God bless you guys. Love you. Seems like all I could see was the struggle. When I
That's right, brothers and sisters, redeemed, set free. Once we come to Jesus, repent, truly repent, follow him, then we have been redeemed. We're a totally new creation. So when an enemy comes around, messing with your thoughts, trying to tell you all about that old you that's been forgiven, trying to remind you of how bad you used to be, well, then you just run right back to the Father's arms and ask Him to remind you who you are. When I lose my way and I forget my name Remind me who I am Is who I don't want to be Remind me who I am In the loneliest places When I can't remember what grace is
I am to you. Tell me, lest I forget who I am to you, that I belong to you. So never let that enemy fill your mind with that stinking thinking. Remember whose you are, because you've been redeemed through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You're His now, so act like it, live like it, and believe it. I hope this blesses each and every one of you who listen to it. Don't forget, as always, to say a prayer for the children. Man, do they really need it. Say a prayer for our fellow brothers and sisters, that they can stand strong against the wiles of the wicked one. And remember whose they are. And say a prayer for all those lost in the darkness, trying to find another way when there's only one way. <clears throat> May the Father bless you. May He keep you. May He be gracious to you. And most of all, during these crazy, crazy times, may He give you peace. I'll see y'all next time.